Rising sea levels, impact of climate change in Singapore's water resources, human health and the energy sector. Now, these are some of the key issues that the new Climate Science Research Program Office will be focusing on when it's set up next year. And for more on the issue of climate change and how we can better tackle it, we're joined by Professor Erlen Chilian, Director of the Centre for Climate Research Singapore, and landscape architect Professor Herbert Dreisettler, who's CEO of Dreisettler Consulting. Thank you very much, professors, for coming in and speaking to me. Um, Professor um, Shalene, I want to start with you. So, what's your take on the urgency of this climate crisis? You know, some experts are calling it devastating. Well, it is urgent. Uh, we know that the global temperatures are rising. We also know that it's due to the emission of greenhouse gases. The uh, levels of carbon dioxide have increased by about 40% since the Industrial Revolution and temperatures have gone up about one degree globally. And to tackle this, to stop the temperature increase, we have to stop the emissions. And it's very urgent to start doing that because the carbon dioxide levels keep going up. Right. So, um, Professor uh, Dreisel, I want to find out from you. We are, we are living in an urban environment right now. There's no escaping it. Um, you're an urban designer, landscape architect uh, as well. Climate change not going away. What kind of a role do you see urban planning playing in helping to reduce the effects of climate change? Well, it's actually most people live in cities and, li and cities are mostly affected by this because we have the heat island effects, which means uh, basically the radiation comes in. We have our air con condition systems. We have our hot streets and livability is very much affected on temperature. Mm -hmm. So I think it is very, very important. I mean, we can do a lot of things in our cities to make it better. We need more shade, we need more evaporation, we need more green, we need green roofs. And all these things can be done, are proven to really have a strong effect to lower and buffer the extremes. And I think this will be the challenges for the future to actually change our cities to be more resilient to the climate situation. Okay, so speaking of changing our cities, besides just um, greening our buildings, that is what we're seeing a lot now. Can you share some of the other examples of what we can do in, in terms of um, urban planning? I, I think we can do a lot. I mean, if we take Singapore, you know, we have so much air conditioning systems here, which are basically cooling the rooms, but heating up the streets and all the surrounding. There are so many, many better ways to work with more efficient air conditioning systems. There is actually things going on in, in Singapore. For example, uh, the uh, National University of Singapore is experimenting with new buildings, with new types of buildings, just a new building came up, zero um, energy needing, uh, having more open spaces, uh, which are just uh, using the outdoor uh, temperature with uh, shade and air movement which is agreeable, so we need less, uh, 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 less air conditioning systems. Mm. We can also do much more by reducing our private uh, car mobility to be more on public, on public transportation system. And we can do even much more if we are more aware about what we eat, because even our food production is influencing extremely strong uh, the temperature and, and actually has an enormous effect on climate. Right, so a lot as well plays into it. Um, Professor um, Shillian, so, you know, last year we saw forest fires in the Arctic Circle, high temperatures in the U.S. on Australia, devastating droughts in South Africa, Argentina. Can you put things in um, perspective for us? So what kind of extreme effects are we possibly going to see here in Singapore specifically if climate change worsens? And how much of it is something that we can actually predict? Well, we can predict what may happen in the future. We know that we have already seen a warming in Singapore. I mean, the uh, coolest months now are as warm as the hottest months were in the 1970s. So we have clearly seen an effect in Singapore already. And this is a combination of the urban heat island effect mm. that we're talking about, but also the global warming. And the global warming is accelerating. We can do something about it by stopping the emissions of greenhouse gases, but it's not just for Singapore. It has to be done globally to have an effect. Uh, other effects we have seen in Singapore is that the number of rain showers, intense rain showers, has also increased. So there's more water coming down from the sky. That will become even worse in the future as the global warming accelerates. And then the crucial issue for Singapore is the rise in sea levels. The warming of the oceans, the melting of the ice caps in Antarctic and Greenland will give higher sea levels in the future. And we have done calculations of that. It may mean that the sea level will go up by a meter or so by 2100. But there are huge uncertainties about this, and in particular the Antarctic ice sheet. How fast will it melt? 
It could be one meter already in 2050 if we have a catastrophic melting of the Antarctic ice sheet. And the only thing that helps there is to reduce the emissions of greenhouse gases because this is a global warming phenomenon. So with the rising sea levels, are there fears that, you know, complete islands will be submerged in this case? Yes, there are. I mean, a low-lying island like Singapore, you have to take protective action. You have to build walls around the city of Singapore to protect against the sea level rise. And you also have to adapt the infrastructure to raise sea levels in the future. And I mean, it's both water coming from the sides, from the ocean, and water coming from above to, that will increase in the future. And you have to get prepared for this. Right, so and that's why it's so important and urgent. But thank you so much, professors, for coming in and um, speaking to me. We've been speaking there with Professor Erlen Chilian, Director of Centre for Climate Research Singapore, and landscape architect Professor Herbert Drysettle, who's CEO of Drysettle Consulting.